This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Good afternoon and welcome to the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Laura Duclos. Lubbock City Council finally found a new location for the Go to Key Library, and it will save the city $800,000 a month. Reporter David Talley has more on the story. The Godecky branch of the Lubbock Public Library is moving, again. The current building, located at 6707 Slide Road, was once home to a Barnes & Noble bookstore. Library manager Lorraine Nipson said it isn't as simple as just moving books from one building to another. So I'm in the background going through all of these books. I am taking a shelf at a time. I go through each book, I scan it in the computer, see how many times every book has checked out. If it hasn't checked out within the past five years, I, could, I take deep consideration as to whether to keep it or not. I look at how many times it's checked out in those past five years. If it's not a popular book, I go ahead and get rid of it. Or if it's a book that, as in this, I pull off the shelf and it's coming apart and it's old anyway and we do have other copies, then I will choose to do what we call discard and said that the reason for this monotonous process is that there isn't enough room for all of the books at the library's new location. We're moving from an 18,000 square foot library into a 12,000 square foot library, roundabout. So we really have to downsize. Gibson said that the cost of keeping the library at its current address was the main reason for the decision to move. However, she added, Keeping Godecky's doors open is a service to the people of Lubbock. Well, the director told me, and in fact we have known for a long time, that the lease at this place that was going to be a um, temporary location would be expiring in September. They met with the owners and the, they tried to renegotiate because it is very expensive here. It's $25,000 a month rent plus additional uh, maintenance of the lawns and things like that the little curbing around the side. So it just became where it was, like I said, a temporary location. We needed to find something else. Mm -hmm. The last time that Godeke was moved from the Quaker and Loop location was because of uh, mold that had overtaken the library. They had to move quickly. Still, it took six or eight months before they even found a location there, and the citizens were not happy. They liked their library. So they got this location. And still, a permanent location has not been found for Godeke. So now we're going to move to another location, but everybody's going to be happy because they will still have their area library. Though moving most of the library's features won't be easy, Nipson says she's excited for the new opportunity. Architects are coming here tomorrow. They're going to see what's in this library that we can take because, as I said, we're downsizing, so we're going to have to take as many shelves as possible and then we'll see where we go from there. New library location is 5034 Frankfurt Avenue. For MCTV, I'm David Talley. The Texas primary elections kick off today. If you're a registered voter, you can vote right here on campus in the library until 7 p.m. Running this year is State Senator Wendy Davis and Attorney General Greg Abbott, who are both expected to win their party tickets for governor and move on to the election in November. Also expected to win for lieutenant governor is Democratic nominee Letitia Van de Pute, is expected to win the Democratic nomination. The longtime incumbent David Dewhurst and Congressman Randy Nagabauer are running for re-election but have some challengers giving them a run for their money. Neil Marchbanks is expected to win the Democrat primary. Also incumbent, U.S. Senator John Cornyn is facing a Republican challenge from Congressman Steve Stockman. And finally, the Democrat frontrunners are community organizer Keisha Rogers and Dennis David Alamil. The SGA runoff election is just around the corner. Do you know who you're going to vote for? The results of the SGA election revealed that two campaign teams will be running head-to-head -head this week to determine who will be elected for the next student body executive board. One Tech and Experience Where It Counts are the executive blocks on the ballots. The runoff election will be held this Thursday and Friday, March 6th and 7th. Visit ttuhub.net for more information on the candidates running the ballot and for voting locations. Looks like you could find a Pitch Perfect act in the sub last week. And hit me, baby, one more time. Yeah, what are you going to do with all that junk? What? All that junk inside me. Tab hosted a Matador mashup event where students had the opportunity to sing their favorite or original mashup song. Some students proved to be superstars and others were there just to enjoy the music. Here's what some participants had to say. Um, it was really fun. It was amazing, guys. Yeah, we should do this all the time. Yes, 
really fun. Stuff. I know you guys have a lot of events going on, but yeah, let's get more advertisement. And yeah. like, we got lucky that we had a free night, but it was great. It was a lot of fun. Okay. We need more people up here to do this all the time. For more information on future TAB events, go to tab.ttu.edu. It was pretty cold again this morning, but it looks like it's going to warm up again. Our weather specialist, Carly Smith, has what you can expect from the weather this week. Carly? You know what, Laura? It's already starting to feel warmer out here with the current temperatures sitting at about 62 degrees. And with the sunny skies, things will continue to warm up into the upper 60s, possibly reaching 70 today. But um, as we take a look at tonight's forecast on our new Memorial Circle camera, um, you'll see that the temperatures will drop uh, once again a little cool, but not quite like this morning, uh, to 38 degrees. And so then as we take a look at tomorrow's forecast, you'll see that the high will only reach 56 degrees. And that is because we are having once again another cold front blow through. And so winds will be blowing from the north, west, north um, at 12 to 22 miles per hour. So it will be a little breezy. And with that cold front blowing through it in the morning hours, um, winds could gust even stronger, just so you're prepared. And so as we take a look at our three day forecast, you'll see that Thursday after the cold front blows through, the winds will shift back from blowing from the southwest at 12 to 22 miles per hour. And it might uh, gust even stronger and the temperatures will warm back up because of those southwest winds into the 70s. And so Friday will continue to be warm at 76 and so with that being said it looks like it's going to be a great week as far as the weather goes laura back to you thank you carly that's all for the tuesday edition of the mctv weekday update be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news and we'll see you tomorrow